Hi, I'm Kate, and I'm here at the Intrepid Sierra and Space Museum. I'm one of our aircraft restoration specialists here, and I am going to work on taking this panel off of our A-12 starter cart. Um, what this was, was meant to start the engines on the A-12 and various other aircraft, but this in particular was for ours. Um, in order to do this, I have to use certain solvents to get around the paint, and I need to be able to take off these Zeus fasteners as we go. Liam, can you bring in the camera a little? I've already started, and as you can see, the paint is bubbling up around these Zeus fasteners, and what I need them to do is get enough that I can wire brush them and then scrape underneath so I have the ability. I need to put on my correct PPE to use these solvents, and we're ready to go. So Kate, tell us about this, what you're doing there exactly. So what I have here, um, which is why I need to use this special mask, is I first took some mineral spirits to clean off the Zeus fasteners that I'm preparing to work on. And this is a paint thinner stripper that will be able to um, take off a lot of the paint that's around this so I can get underneath it and try and get these to move a little bit more. Is it just like a, a, normal, a normal product that you yes. can pick up at a... Um, yes, you can pick this up at Home Depot, wherever you, you need. You can probably even get it at Walmart. Oh, interesting. All right, I'll let you get back to your work. Thank you. Hey, can I ask you a question? Sure. Get away from so can you tell us a little bit about the car that you're working on? What is the relationship to the ship or the planes? Why are we doing it? Something like that. A little bit of its background would be awesome. Um, so as I said before, this is the starter cart for our A12. Um, and what it has is two big engines to be able to start the engines 
on the plane because they were so large that you couldn't do that just with a regular ignition. Um, why we're doing this is because this has been out in the weather and the elements for a little while and it just needs a, a good cleaning and paint and refurbishment. Um, what I'm finding in a lot of places, which you'll see when I get this panel off, is quite a bit of rust. So I'm going to need to clean that out and mitigate that as well. Um, and as I continue on this process, I will remove, this is the last panel I need to remove, and then I will be sanding more and continuing on with the project as needed. Um, hopefully this is done by the end of next month. Uh, we've got a question from our audience. Okay. Uh, don't you use sandblasting to remove paint? We do not. Um, we like to use what is called a Festool sander because it sucks up most of the stuff. And we like to be able to have our hands on the actual machine. Sandblasting can sometimes take off too much and it can damage the metal. Um, we also cannot sandblast inside of our hangar. And in the winter, we're very limited with what we can do. Actually, at this point, I can change mass because I don't have these solvents completely open anymore. Um, and what I will start doing is taking wire brushes to places that I have already added solvent to that I've had a chance to cure. And I'll just use a regular dust mask for this. Um, always use safety glasses when you're doing things like this because you never know if a small piece will come up or anything else like that. Um, so we'll just get my piece of ink here. So as I said, I had already pre-done some of these top ones so they would be ready to show you. These will need to dry for somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes. You'll notice when the paint starts to bubble up, that's when I should go back and, and use the wire brush. Another question. Yes. Uh, Karen Good asks from Facebook, how cold is it in the hangar today? <laughs> so sometimes it's very cold in here. Today it's about 60 degrees, which is nice for us. Um, sometimes with the outside temperature and all of the windows that we have and things like that, it can drop into the 50s. But today it's very comfortable in here. All right, we have another question. Hey, what has been your favorite aircraft or helicopter to work on? Oh my goodness. So my favorite aircraft since I was small has been our Lockheed A-12. And we are in the process of refurbishing that, that we can only really work on from about April to October because it gets too cold outside. 
Um, and we have been able to start stripping the paint from that. We need to prime it. It's actually quite a long project. It'll probably be about two or three years because it's the largest plane we have. Um, but that is most definitely, that's my dream that I got to actually work on that. Um, what I'm going to use now is something called Corrosion X. Um, it helps just kind of lubricate this and get some of the rust out of there. So hopefully it makes it easier to screw out once I get there. We do. Once we are able to get, you can't see it really from here, but once we are able to get our Chickasaw out and we also have a sea cobra behind me and this, um, we will be bringing in our Cougar aircraft for mostly a, a repaint, kind of the same idea of it's been outside for a while. So we do a repaint and we repair whatever needs to be done, mitigate whatever corrosion there is. So I'm really looking forward to that. Another question. Um, David from Facebook would like to know are any of the aircraft on the flight deck flight worthy or can they be made so? Um, none of our aircraft are flight worthy. Uh, they have all, because so many of them we borrow from the Navy and the Marines, um, most of them have been stripped or disconnected from most of their engine compartments and the different hoses and the different electronics. Um, in terms of making them flight worthy, I'm not really sure. I don't think so. It would take millions of dollars to be able to do that and complete overhauls. And we do not have the money for that. <laughs> so what we do is we do our best to just really maintain them and keep them as clean and as well kept as possible considering most of our aircraft are outside.
All right, we have a, a new question from Kristen. How do the aircraft get to the Intrepid, and how do you decide and arrange what you receive next? Um, our aircraft come to the Intrepid usually in pieces, uh, sometimes by barge. They've been brought in by vehicle before, and they need to be reassembled on the pier normally, and then we crane them up to the flight deck and manually move them where we would like them to go. In terms of choosing the aircraft that come, um, I'm not responsible for any of that. We have our curator, Eric, who goes through and sees what's available, um, what we can move. We also have a certain capacity, obviously, for what we can fit on the flight deck. Um, most of our aircraft we will keep here indefinitely. Um, sometimes we get a new one. A couple of years ago, we got a 1945 Sky Raider that I had the privilege of that being my first plane that I worked on here. Um, and as we, we go, we kind of give and take. And sometimes it depends on which loan is up. Sometimes it depends on simply what we're interested in. What's your uh, professional background? How did you get into aircraft restoration? So, professionally, I'm actually a historian. Um, but I got into aircraft restoration because I did an internship in New Mexico at the National Museum of Nuclear Science and History, helping refurbish their Cold War missiles, which was so cool. And I really worked to figure out how to get into this profession. Um, what I ended up doing is we moved to New York for my husband's job. And while I was job searching, I was able to come here and volunteer in aircraft restoration. 99% of my skill set I've actually learned on the job. Um, I have been here for four years, I think, um, in June. So that's really how I got my start here. And then I was able to work my way up and have the privilege to finally have a full time job here. which is awesome. I have the coolest job on the planet in case you didn't notice. thing I've learned about. Um, actually, and it's related to Intrepid, the coolest thing I learned here in terms of like logistical things is our Sea Cobra that I said is, is behind me and in process of also being restored was the only aircraft here to actually land under its own power. They landed it on the flight deck. They dumped all the fuel and, and the oil and the hydraulic things out of it. And we were able to work on that and keep it here. So the guys who, we always joke, the guys who came landed and took a cab home. I might do a pan of it, show everyone what you're talking about. Oh.
Sometimes that happens. <laughs> Another, uh, we've got another question from Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the helicopter in the background and when will it be ready? Um, I assume you mean the Chickasaw over here? And it is actually ready. Uh, this was fully completed in November, but we decided to keep it inside for the winter. Um, we had the space to do it, but also just to protect the new condition of it. And we will roll it out in the spring when, when the weather is a lot better and it's easier to maintain. Another question. Why are the cockpit windows and intrepid painted over? Um, many of our cockpit windows are actually very damaged um, over time when we get them, things like that. And we want to preserve the interiors of our aircraft as well. So by painting over them, um, we actually are able to preserve more of the aircraft than less of it. Have you ever found personal items inside of the cockpits? I personally have not yet, um, but I have heard that other people have found a few personal items. Um, usually it's, it's something small, like a document or a flight transcript of some kind. Um, they aren't usually very, very major. No dog tags. No dog tags. No, we have not found dog tags. We have another question from Cora from Facebook. How many people work on Intrepid restoring various aircrafts? Do you only work on the Intrepid? Um, so there's actually only two of us who work on the aircraft here. Um, you will meet my manager and the other aircraft specialist next, next week, maybe the week after. I don't remember when our next stream is. Um, but there's truly only two of us to do all the work and the maintenance on the planes, which is why we can only bring in one or two at a time so we can split our work capabilities. But on the larger things, we work together to try and get them done. Um, and yes, we only work on Intrepid. Um, we are here full time, five days a week, and we maintain everything as we can, which can be anything from restoration to cleaning airplanes to dusting airplanes um and just regular oil and repair we have to check the chains and the chucks on the deck um we have a, a wide variety of different things that we need to do but mainly we focus on uh restoring our aircraft in our hangar
Hey, do you have a dream aircraft that you would like to work on one day? Well, I already get to do it. Um, our Lockheed A-12 is my absolute favorite on this whole planet. Um, but we also have the privilege of working on a space shuttle. And I'm not going to lie, that might edge out that A-12 a little bit. Um, but I, I think those are, ooh, actually, an F-18. I would love to do work on an F-18. Um, I just, I think the, the fighters are so cool and it's such a great opportunity and we don't have one. So if somebody wants to donate that, we'd love it. <laughs> So what work was done on the Chickasaw? Um, on the Chickasaw was a full repaint. Um, and the interesting part of the Chickasaw is that it's a magnesium alloy. So we were not able to use power tools for the most part. We had to actually take scrapers and chip off as much of the paint as possible. And then scotch break um, was what we used to rough up the metal to be able to repaint. There were several panels that were replaced because they were so corroded or coming off. Um, and we also cleaned up the inside and the cockpit. We replaced the interior floor uh, because that was ready for somebody to go straight through when they walked in there. We also replaced the windows. All of the glass is new on that. Um, and this is actually a drastically different color than what we started with. When it came in here, it was black. And now what we have on here um, is I'm trying to think of the paint scheme. I believe a 1963 paint scheme. I'm not sure that I remember, um, but our curator chooses the, the paint schemes that we use. And sometimes we change it up like we do with, with the Chickasaw and other times we will go back to what the original was in the first place, like we are with the Sea Cobra. Um, we do the best that we can to keep them authentic. Uh, sometimes we actually get aircraft that are painted incorrectly. Uh, the insignia is not correct. The stars and bars are in weird places. Sometimes the color is off just enough to be noticeable and strange. Um, our Sky Raider, actually, when we got it, had these weird lions on the side of the fuselage that took forever to get off so we could actually do the correct stars and bars and the things that are supposed to go there. Um, so that's just an example of, of when we get weird stuff that comes through. And how do you find out the correct paint scheme for that aircraft? What, what's your research? Um, your source, of, you know, is it from the Navy or is it collectors? It can be from all over the place. Um, the Navy, various archives, um, we discuss with Smithsonian every once in a while because they may have more pictures and, and examples than we do. Um, but mostly it's really a lot of reading and looking through. And we actually use a lot of the old manuals because frequently it will explain what scheme it was in in the first place. Um, and we try to keep it as accurate as possible to the year of the aircraft, which is something else that sometimes happens. We will get an aircraft that's from 1972 and it'll have a 1980s paint scheme on it, which makes no sense. So we try and bring it back to what it was. And is this yellow, the original paint scheme of when this belonged to the military or the? Yes. Um, the yellow is actually the original. Sometimes you will see these in gray and that's more from the seventies and eighties. It depends on the plane that it worked with, but for the most part, these were actually yellow with some red and black accents so they were easily uh viewable on the runway because you obviously don't 
want this to be underneath a jet and then have it completely um, disappear underneath there. It's a safety issue. So that said, I will be repainting this yellow um, as it's supposed to be done. Uh, Chris from Facebook wants to know, uh, you mentioned working on a Sky Raider. What's the backstory on that particular aircraft? Um, so that particular aircraft was actually ours was a prototype um, that there were, I don't remember how many there were during World War II. We actually have one of the oldest intact Sky Raiders. Um, it is a single seater and it was used to bomb um, during World War II. And there's three sets of bombs on the underneath portion. Um, and it was historically a very important addition to the Navy um, and the Air Force's forces um, because it was efficient and it was relatively fast um, and it could go in and out pretty undetected the way that it was painted. And, and our Skyrider came from somewhere, you know, where did it come from? Do you remember? Is it the Marine Museum? It was actually, yeah, I think it was the Marine Museum. And the poor thing was out rotting in a field. Nobody had touched it. Um, when it came in, it had quite a bit of damage. We had to replace quite a few panels. Um, one of the ailerons needed to be completely redone. And we actually ended up, the cockpit was so bad that we ended up making our own um, dummy cockpit, essentially, to try and make it as good as possible. Because it's very hard to find the parts that we need for a plane that old. What capabilities do we have here at the restoration? You know, do we, we can fabricate, we can replace things. Tell us a bit about that. Um, we actually do our work in-house for 99%, I would say, of what we need to do. Um, we are able to fabricate, we have shears, we have brakes. Um, we are able to rivet, which is a very important thing that we need. Um, and we are able to really do our best to form and continue to keep the panels as well as possible so that they blend into the aircraft as though they've always been there. Okay, Brett wants to know, does the A-12 have a weapon bay? It does not. The A-12 was never meant to carry weapons. It is a purely reconnaissance and speed aircraft. Um, the A-12, actually, it's a, a misnomer. People think that the A-12 flew over the Soviet Union, but it only flew over Vietnam and was based in Japan for that reason. So give us an update on where, where you're at with this process. So with this process, as I go through, I like to work pretty methodically and kind of do the same process. So then when I get to the next step, I can just do the same process all the way around. Um, right now I have, I actually needed to put more thinner on this because I didn't have enough there. So enough paint didn't come off. And right now I have done one, two, three, four, working on five, six, six out of nine, 10. There's one actually on the other side of that, um, which I was working on for most of this morning and it's being a little bit of a bear. 
So we may not be able to actually get this panel fully off today um, because I might need to use different solvents or special processes on the one on that side. It's in an awkward spot to try and get a screwdriver. Um, so the SR71 is larger. It holds more fuel. It is a two-seater, not a one-seater. Um, both are reconnaissance and never meant to have weapons on them. The SR71 did fly over the Soviet Union um, and collect a lot of pictures and other things for us. Um, and the SR71 obviously came after the A12. Um, so those are really the, the main differences. The A12, however, was faster. And I believe it still holds the record as the fastest airplane ever. Um, I believe it flew at almost Mach 3. And the SR-71, while very fast, cannot hit that point. Okay, I think we'll wrap up now if you can do your outro. Oh, sure. Um, so I will still be working on this for a little while. Maybe the next time I see you, uh, it will be time to actually pull it off. Um, and I'm so glad that you could join us today. Um, so please tune in for our next segment, I believe in two weeks. And just keep a lookout on our social media and please join our pages so you can continue to follow us. Um, and thank you so much for being here.